welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio here at TIFF. Charlie? Yes. Oh, Dexter, Craig. Um, firstly, c congratulations on having a movie made that's based on your music. I think it's kind of a rare thing to harken back to the days of albums when you could actually listen to an album and kind of feel a story flow come out of it. Um, so to have that be realized and recognized in the musical version of, your, of, of the album, it must be an incredibly satisfying experience. Well, it's, it's, it's not really a musical version of the album. It's, it's a lot of the songs from Sunshine and Leith right. are in this film, but there's a lot of other songs, proclaimed songs from before then and after then that are in also. It's, it's, it's basically a story about two guys coming out of the army, coming back to Edinburgh, and it was originally a stage show. So I think the, the guy who, uh, the, the original writer, Stephen Greenhorn, he, he listened to the lyrics and the kind of, the, the, the tale rose out of the, the lyrics, so it kind of, it was, it was through that way. Yeah, yeah, certainly inspired by those songs, the story. That, is yeah. By. How long ago was that? How long did Stephen approach you and say, I think there's a thing here? Yeah, I, I think initially about 2005, I was speaking to him last right. night and he said he'd, he'd had the idea sitting drinking whiskey, copious amounts of whiskey and listening to the Proclaimers record and he noted down the idea of Proclaimers musical as daft as that sounded and put it down on his sideboard and he found it the next he'd forgotten all about the idea so that's what the genesis of the idea of working the lyrics, the idea of the lyrics into some sort of play, some sort of uh, storyline so yeah I mean it was a surprise to us when he came to us with the idea I mean, it grew and grew a couple of runs of the, of the play in Scotland and then the idea of the of the, the movie came along, and then Dexter, mm. thankfully, was was uh, appointed director of the project. So proclaimers music plus whiskey equals. <laughs> it works, man. You know it works. It know equals it works. magic. You know it works. <laughs> it equals magic. <laughs> if for it some does. people it equals living hell, it really depends. It really depends. You know, from the point of view. Yeah. Very cool. And Dexter, for you, I mean, mm. like what kind of it drew you to this. I know you're a former actor, Lock, mm. Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, mm. awesome, awesome movie. Yeah. Of course, cult figure in that sense and having those experiences and maybe a little bit of the battle scenes from from uh, Band of Brothers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I've covered a lot of bases. So yeah, so, so what, what brings you to, uh, to the musical genre? Uh, well, one of the first films I appeared in as a child was Bugsy oh, yeah, Malone, so that's quite... That's right. But I don't think it's just that. I've, I directed a film a couple of years ago called Wild Bill, which is really a family story about a father and son. And I think the producers saw that and responded to that. And and because there was such a long development process with uh, Sunshine on Leith, and uh, like we're saying, Stephen Greenhorn with that that rep company in Dundee took a lot of time sort of working through various different versions, and really came across this really lovely story about a family and a couple of guys coming home. Uh, from the war and trying to find their way back into their life and into their family when their lives had changed so dramatically. Um, it was very clear that the Sunshine Leith was really a story that had heart and was about family and the, and the, the, the home. And so my first film was along those lines as well. So I think that was kind of why they initially started talking to me. And then, um, you know, the beautiful thing about music is, is that it's universal. So it, it, it really, you know... Uh, it really it spans across the whole story. And those songs work beautifully in tandem with the drama. So I was like, this is a really exciting, interesting way to tell a story that, that I hadn't really seen before. And how did you kind of sit down and re-digest these guys' music? Did you like listen to all their albums or you just went and watched the show? Or? I didn't have a chance to watch the show. So some of the songs I knew, some I didn't. But what I, the jumping off point for me was certainly the lyrics and how those lyrics were being used to tell the story of the characters and how those characters were opening up their hearts and minds through those lyrics, through those songs, because that's very much how we approached it um, with, the, with the actors, that this was their moment of a soliloquy, this was their moment of opening up to the audience and sort of revealing what's in their hearts and, and using music and lyrics and songs to do that. Um, so I kind of, the ones that I didn't know I read, and I, uh, and I read the lyrics and saw how that played into who they were. And then I, you know, started listening again, and I'm right, okay, oh, that's that. And, uh, and, and the guys were very generous and gave us a lot of creative freedom, which is uh, a, a very trusting thing to do. Uh, Charlie Craig, I mean, it's been 20 years since Benny and June, and um, that obviously gave you guys a bit of a kickstart um, as well. Does that feel like a lifetime ago? or that Sometimes it feels minutes? like five lifetimes ago, you know, depending on how tired you are after a gig, and sometimes it feels like 10 minutes. And even being in Toronto, how many times I've been here, initially came here in 89, probably been here 20 times, always promotion or, or doing shows. 
it kind of it's funny. So sometimes it feels really fast, and sometimes it feels, yeah, you can feel every minute of it. So, Ben, how you feel? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think um, Benny and June was a very, very lucky thing. Um, me and Stuart Masterson had such a relief, and they asked her to come in on the set and t to play something she would like to play. June I seen, and she played that album. And uh, I'm going to be became the song around the set, and that's how it got in the film. So yeah. we've never met hard to say thank you, but I'd like to do that one day. That would be cool. Um, mm. Probably at a film festival somewhere. Yeah, it was nice too. Mm. Um, in terms of movie musicals, do you guys have favourite uh, renditions? Obviously, there's films as small as Once that was you know shot in Ireland, mm. and um, and as big as Les Mis from you mm. know last year. I think looking back, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I would never say I was an expert in musicals or that it, that it was something that drew that drew me into music so much, but watch, you watch West Side Story and the quality of the, the performances, the quality of the songs are stunning, you know, so if Sondheim's involved then it's got to be great. Mm. But I think they set, some, some are better than others, some, some people's music translates better. Into into film. I wonder about the ABBA thing. The ABBA were so uh, the girls were so good as singers, and it was so multi-layered what they did, and so uh, precise that in the hands of lesser people, not Julie Wall is a fantastic actress, but you need to be awful good to be as good as those girls singing. Yeah. Whereas with this one, <laughs> the people singing in it are better singers than we are. We we have rough voices, aren't you? That I'm not, of course, yeah. Yes. We, we we're pub singers. <laughs> essentially, essentially, we're pub singers. We're bar singers. Yeah. So we get up and we deliver it, and that's it, and you go and do the next one. Whereas people who have finer voices, particularly female voices, uh, and, and the female voices in the film, I think, um, give the music a, a real kick and give it and take it somewhere else that we, we could never do ourselves. Um, so I think that, that music, our music in the hands of other people, I think, uh, exalts it a bit to me. Yeah. Very cool. Told you they were generous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what about bringing it home to Scotland and, and being able to film it there? And well, I mean, doing so much of it was filmed in, in Scotland, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Pretty much. I mean, oh. Glasgow and Edinburgh. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, that's integral to to the story and those characters and the world that they live in. And and it's you know, it's cinematically, it's 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 a joy because. You know, you point the camera in the right direction, and and you get the the light in, at the right moment, and and it looks fantastic. And 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 uh, th there's not, a, it it wasn't like a complicated or uh, very deliberate. I mean, obviously, you know, efforts like we've got to make the city look amazing. We we took it at the moments that we got it. I mean, you know, if the sun shone, we we count ourselves as blessed, and that was a, that was a lovely moment. But but it is it's so rich that city, and it and it and, and it and it tells its own story. And so it's it's the backdrop to our characters and their lives and their stories. Um, it's just uh, and it's not trying to over egg it. We didn't we didn't feel like we have to push it. Sometimes it it's very present and. Other times it's not. Uh, well, just a, a, it's a very photogenic place. And you get a chance to show it in Edinburgh soon. Yeah, yeah sure. we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, seventeenth of September. Yeah. It's, it's a very big day for us. That'd really cool. important. Yeah, yeah. Well, really thanks cool. for coming in and spending a few minutes with us. Appreciate the time. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.